Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit about the enzyme myeloperoxidase, and then we're going to look at its mechanism. All right. So, uh, myeloperoxidase is an enzyme that's going to generate this molecule, which is a reactive oxidative species. It's called hypochlorite. It's basically an OH attached to a chlorine atom. And although this molecule of hypochlorite, or in this form, hypochlorous acid, although it's not technically a free radical, it's still a reactive oxidative species because, as we'll see in a few minutes, it will be used to oxidize proteins and so forth of cells targeted for destruction. And those cells are typically invading pathogens. So myeloperoxidase, the gene, is, of course, is expressed by neutrophils, so granulocytes. And what do neutrophils do? Neutrophils are sadistic cells. They go and they find invading pathogens such as bacteria and they ultimately induce respiratory burst. What respiratory burst is essentially is you have these granules inside the neutrophil and these granules are gonna contain a lot of really dangerous stuff. Uh, this is one free radical contained within them, but there's a lot of others, and also degradative enzymes, perforins, all sorts of stuff. And during respiratory bursts, these neutrophils release those granules, and they essentially release them into the bacteria, and it just obliterates the bacteria. All right, So they're very sadistic, and we have a video on that mechanism as well. But... Uh, that's what myeloperoxidase is. It's an enzyme that generates hypochlorous acid or hypochlorite, which is going to be used to kill invading pathogens such as bacteria during degranulation, a process that occurs during respiratory burst, part of the immune system. First thing I want to actually do is look at the myeloperoxidase mechanism and then talk about what it does at the biochemical level. So this enzyme is going to use a heme moiety. It has a P450 type of mechanism. And the first thing we're going to have is this iron 3 plus, and we're going to hydroperoxidate it. So the substrate for this enzyme, myeloperoxidase, is actually hydrogen peroxide, HOOH, or sometimes written H2O2. What's going to happen is a base in the active site is going to abstract this proton, causing this oxygen to form a coordinate covalent bond with this iron, as shown right here. So we still have this iron 3 plus and we have this OOH, all right? Now we're gonna form what's called an iron oxy species. This iron is gonna donate two electrons into this oxygen right here, this proximal oxygen, okay? And when that happens, this iron is gonna go up to oxidation state to the five plus charge. But in doing so, this OH is gonna be lost as a leaving group, in which case it's gonna pick up this proton that was just uh, abstracted in this first step, and it's gonna form a water. And actually, if you look at the reaction of myeloperoxidase, it'll give you hydrogen peroxide as a substrate, and then also water is a product. Now in doing this, when we donate two electrons from this iron three up to this oxygen, we now just have a double bond essentially to this oxygen from the iron five. Now, this is not technically a double bond, but it's a coordinate covalent bond, which is very strong. And this is typically the way we write this, just so mechanistically we can make some good sense of it. Now, in order to uh, generate hypochlorite or hypochlorous acid in the acid form, we obviously have to have a chlorine attached here. So chloride, which is very prevalent, chloride is gonna attack this oxygen atop, okay? So nucleophilic attack, and one of these bonds right here is going to go, these two electrons are going to go right back onto the iron 5. That reduces this iron 5 back to the 3 plus state because it's receiving two electrons. And now we have a single bond between this oxygen and this chlorine, right? Technically, this ClO, this is technically hypochlorite, but it's going to be released in its acid form. And when it does that, simply this oxygen bond to the iron is going to break, and it's going to come up and abstract this hydrogen from another base in the active site. And that's going to generate the ClOH, which is hypochlorous acid, the protonated form or acid form of hypochlorite. Okay, and of course that regenerates the resting state of the heme iron, so we'll see that down here. It can do another cycle, uh, but also we generate our reactive oxidative species. Now hypochlorite is very, very dangerous, and that's why it's actually used during degranulation and respiratory burst to kill bacteria. 
And at the biochemical level, at the molecular level, the way that hypochlorite works is really by inducing oxidation of proteins, particularly cysteine residues. So the R group of cysteine we know is a thiol. It's just a simple SH. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but what you can hopefully see is that through various uh, molecules of hypochlorite, so several of them, you're ultimately going to convert this SH into what's called a sulfonic acid. So it now has two double bonds to an oxygen, or to two oxygens, and another OH. This cysteine is now no longer functional. Okay, Number one, it cannot form a disulfide bridge even if it had to, but also it can no longer uh, do a nucleophilic attack if it had to, and also, its interaction with other amino acids has changed dramatically. The way this actually happens is the sulfur will first get chlorinated by HOCl, by hypochlorous acid, and then the water, just in solution, will attack the sulfur, kicking off the chloride, and then you have a sulfur hydroxyl bond like this, a sulfenic acid. All right? And then through a series of other hypochlorites, which basically do the same thing, you're going to get, first of all, a sulfenic acid, with one double bond oxygen, and then finally a sulfonic acid which with two double bond oxygens. And as I mentioned, this protein can no longer serve its function very well, if at all, because the cysteine can no longer be a nucleophile. Its interaction with other amino acids is essentially destroyed, and its properties are completely changed. It can no longer form disulfide bridges if it had to. So this is definitely no longer a functional cysteine. And this is one way that hypochlorous acid damages cells. And while the hypochlorous acid alone does not necessarily kill the cell, if you're killing the proteins, then the cell can no longer function. There are other mechanisms during respiratory bursts that actually kill the cell, such as the introduction of perforins and then also granzymes which induce apoptosis of the bacteria if that's your invading pathogen. Okay, But this will certainly stop proteins from working and considering you want to kill these bacteria by any mechanism, even though you're eventually just going to kill them through apoptosis, uh, induced apoptosis that is, uh, it certainly helps to slow them down in the process. All right, So that's what myeloperoxidase does expressed by neutrophils and granulocytes, and it makes hypochlorite or hypochlorous acid. And hopefully now you have a good understanding of how that actually damages proteins. It will not alone kill the cell, but it'll certainly help slow it down. Now, before we actually conclude this video, I actually want to go over a second aspect of this mechanism, myeloperoxidase, and that's actually we can see the generation of another reactive oxidative species, another less common one, called hypothiocyanite which is actually, instead of a chlorine, it's actually a thiocyanate, an, a sulfur carbon nitrogen group attached to this OH. All right, so the mechanism is going to start out identical. We're initially going to have hydroperoxidation in the same way we just saw. So we'll have an iron 3 OOH, and then we're going to form the iron oxy species shown up here. So we're going to expel water and form this iron, essentially double bond, but it's a coordinate covalent bond with oxygen and iron in the 5 plus oxidation state. But now, instead of chlorine attacking right here, we're going to have thiocyanate attack. Thiocyanate is a molecule with a sulfur and a carbon nitrogen triple bond. Okay, and you can look up the chemical structure online. But thiocyanate, the sulfur that is, is actually going to attack this oxygen in the same way that the chloride did. And so now what we have is iron 3 plus, bound to oxygen and then SCN like this. And again, in the same way, this oxygen iron three bond can actually break and this oxygen can then pick up a proton from another base in the active site. And now you have what's called hypothiocyanite. Okay, this is where we have the sulfur of this uh, thiocyanate attached to this oxygen and hydrogen. And again, as in the case of hypochlorous acid or hypochlorite, this is not a free radical. But it is a reactive oxidative species because uh, what this will allow you to do, instead of chlorinating something, you can actually um, add on the sulfur carbon nitrogen, which can actually facilitate the same kind of oxidation that we see here in the case of hypochlorous acid. All right. So hopefully, now you understand a little bit about the mechanism of myeloperoxidase, what it makes, and ultimately what its purpose is. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.